And now, the Mole Mystery Theater, presented by M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skins. Good evening. This is Jeffrey Barnes, welcoming you to the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Tonight we bring you a rollicking comedy mystery written by Sid and Larry Sloan and entitled Follow That Cab. In it, you're going to meet a couple of very strange detectives, Mo and Julius, taxi drivers who spend all their time between calls reading detective stories. This, in their own opinion, qualifies them as expert detectors. And when they attempt to apply their knowledge to the solution of a murder, they get some rather startling results. Ah, uh, you mean they catch the murderer red-handed, Mr. Barnes? Well, I can't tell you that, Dan. Okay, but I can tell you, as well as our men listeners, that when a fellow gets caught red-faced and sore right after shaving, it's probably because he's got wiry whiskers or a tender skin. So he needs Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. Yes, sir, with Mole, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skins. That's right. Mole is the shaving cream that's heavier, the cream that's right for a wiry, hard-to-cut beard or tender skin. Because Mole is heavier, it not only softens your whiskers, it stands them up straight and lets your razor whisk them off. So you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly with Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skins. Mole. And now for tonight's Mole mystery follow that cab. Maybe you were reading in the papers about them two hack drivers, Julius and Moe, which is solving this here Larkin murder. Well, I am personally acquainted with these two characters very well. As a matter of fact, I am one of them, Moe. You see, Julius is all the time reading a magazine called Absolutely Authentic True Crime Fiction, in which is running a series by the name Daniel Dare Moore Detective, which is our ideal. Now, on the day in question, Julius and me is parked in a hack stand at 55th and 6th waiting for a fare. And I am standing with my foot on his running board while he is reading AATCN. Then a dark, foitive man climbs into the cab. Yeah, yeah, go on, Julius. Driver, he whispers hoarsely, urgently. Driver, follow that cab. Uh, what's the matter? What's the matter, Julius? Mo, how many years you been driving a hack? Uh, let me see. Uh, my wife's appendix. Uh, Eleven years. Me? I've been pushing one for nine. So? So what? It says here in black and white that the dark, pointive man is saying, Driver, follow that cab. Did a guy ever say that to you, Mo? Gee, you're right, Julius. You got a head full of brains. You know what, Mo? If I had the chance, I could be a private dick like this here Daniel Damore and this here man. Yeah, I bet you could, Julius. You're smart. Smarter than Daniel Damore. Oh, I would not go so far as to say that, Ma. I would. Julius, you are a genius. <laughs> oh, maybe. But you know, Mo, I could make with the clues and the fingerprints. Yeah, fingerprints. Just give me a chance, Mo. Just give me a chance. I'd show him. Uh, can I go with you on your cases, Julius? Sure, Mo. All good dicks has got stooges. Uh, gee, Julius, you're a real pal. Follow that cab. Oh, it just ain't done, Mo. It never happens. Driver, follow that cab. Huh? I said follow that cab. Hurry. Yes, sir. Bye, Julius. Fallen is pulling into the curb in front of that apartment building. Stop. Stop right behind him. Yes, sir. Hey, look.
look, the guy in the cab is running into the building. He's not going to get away from me. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about my fare? I followed you in my cab. What happens? What's the deal? It's murder. That's what it is, murder. Murder? Yeah, that big so-and-so is running off into that building without paying the tab. And I'm going in there and collect. Come on. Yeah. It's Julius. Mo. That was a shot ringing out. A real shot? Yeah. Come on, something is going on in there. There's the guy who was in my cab. Come on, Mo. Yeah, right with you, Julius. Come on, Mo. Come on, please, open up. Hey, you. Someone's been shot in this apartment. Shot? How do you know? Oh, I heard it, Julius, didn't you? Shut up. I ain't asking you. I'm asking this gent here. Oh. Okay, mister? I was trying to get into this apartment when I heard a shot fired inside. Oh, you was trying to get in, hey? Besides jumping taxi fares, you're also a burglar. No, no, you don't understand. Hey, Julius, the door is open. What? It was closed. Oh, just a minute ago. I tried it. A likely story, a likely story. Julius, if the door's open, why don't we go in and see what goes? Don't rush me. Don't rush me. Come on. Well, everything looks okay in here. <laughs> Holy mackerel. A corpse, Mo. A corpse. Yeah, and dead, too. It's Larkin. Say, how come you know his name? He... I, I was associated with him. And he was the guy you was following in my cab. Yeah, Julius, look, he's got something in his hand, a dead corpse. Get it, Mo. No, you get it, Julius. I don't want to touch no stiffs. A fine assistant you were going to make, afraid of stiffs. Get it. Okay. Uh, it's a piece of paper. Give me it. Yeah, sure, Julius. Here. Uh, been trying to see you for weeks. You can't brush me off any longer. You stole Joan away from me. Signed, Boynton. What's your name? Boynton. I wrote that note. Ah, uh -huh. this is very serious. I get it all now, Julius. This guy I here... told you before, Mo, I am running this here investigation. Now, the way I see it, you two guys is in love with a lady by the name Joan. But Joan isn't a lady. Now, look here, buddy. Leave her mortality out of this. Please. Joan is the name of a song, a song I wrote which Larkin stole from me. I tried to see him to get what belonged to me, but he wouldn't let me in his office. You see, he's a song publisher. So you knocked him off to get even, huh? Julius, leave us call the cops. You're not going to turn me in. I didn't do it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe you didn't. Suppose we was to let you go, Boynton. Then, then you believe? You can't do this, Julius. I'm doing it. Thank you, thank you. I didn't kill Larkin, but I'd have a terrible time trying to prove I did. Just a minute, Boynton, uh, before you go, just for the record. Where do you live? Live? Yeah, we gotta know, just for the record, you know. Oh, uh, the 709 East 78th Street. Uh, take that down in the notes, Mo. Notes? What notes? Take it down. Oh, oh okay, Julius, I got it. All right, Boynton, go on, beat it. Thanks. Frank. But, Julius... Shut up, wait till he gets outside. Julius, we're going to get into all kinds of trouble letting that guy go. He done it. I know, Mo. I know he is knocking off this body here. But if we turns him into the cops, what's in it for us? Nothing. If, on the other hand, this case is a mystery, no one knows who done it, the cops is baffled, and then we are solving it from the clues. What clues? Think of the tabloids with my picture on the front page. Heroic hacky solves case which is baffling entire police force. Think of it. Go on, think. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, but I'm worried. Don't worry, we got this address, ain't we? I think of them things. Now we got to find some clues. Clues? What for? We know Boynton done it. You said so yourself. Of course I said so, but that ain't the way a good detective works. It'd be like reading the back of the book first. We got to show the cops we solved this here case legitimate. We got to start at the beginning. With fingerprints? Correct. Now, I just happen to have here in my pocket my little nifty knick-knack fingerprint detecting kit. Oh, did you right away for one of them? I seen the ad, too, in the magazine. 49 cents covers postage and handling. Yeah, just the same as the G-Man uses. For 49 cents? Well, nearly as good. Now, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, that bottle there on the table. Uh... This one with the liquor don't in it? Don't touch it. Don't touch it. 
I don't want you should smudge the prints, understand? I will take care of that bottle. Oh, yeah, sure, Joyce. Now, I just blow a little of this powder on the bottle to make the fingerprint show up. <laughs> hey, look. What did I tell you? Fingerprints. Gee, real ones. Now I need a clean white handkerchief to wrap around the bottle like that. Now... Julius, you're drinking the evidence. Uh, don't be a joke. The evidence is on the outside of this here bottle. Oh. That's not bad stuff. Now, look. Wipe the rest of the things off in this room. Doorknobs and other things. Yeah. We got the evidence now. We don't want the cops should get it, too. This will make it baffling. Yeah. Now, let me see. I wonder... Holy mackerel. What goes, Julius? My meter in my cab. I forgot to pull the flag. The meter's still running. Oh, wait a minute, Julius. Where are you going? I got to turn off the meter. Well, I'm coming with you. Stay there. I'll be right back. Oh, holy mackerel. Look at that meter. A buck sixty-five. Is this your cab? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, lady, but... I want to go to Grand Central Station. Hurry. Yeah, but, lady, I'm busy. Oh, didn't I see you cancel the meter just now? Yeah, but... Well, you're not busy anymore. Come on, I'm in a hurry. No, lady, you'll have to get out of the cab. I ain't driving you no place. Look, how would you like to lose your license? Uh, I wouldn't. Listen, I've hired you to drive me. If you refuse, you can lose your license. No, oh, oh, okay, you. okay. Don't get yourself in an uproar, lady. I'll take you. Okay, Grand Central Station. This is the place. Now, I think maybe it was a false alarm, Sarge. Some crank here is shot. Well, we'll soon find out. Here, this is the apartment. Is that you, Julius? Stay right where you are. What? Cops? Yeah, and what are you doing here? Me? Yeah, stay right where you are. Don't make no false moves. Come into the apartment, Mike. Shut the door. Okay, Bill. Hey, take a look at that. That's Locke, and he's dead. Yes, I see he is. Brother, you've got plenty of explaining to do. Start talking. As the curtain falls on Act One of tonight's play, Mo finds that being a detective has its ups and downs. And he's really got his... Uh, excuse me, Mr. Barnes. Did I hear you say ups and downs? Yes, I guess you did, Dan. Well, you know, I have a secret solution for some of the ups and downs that men have. Now, come on over here and listen closely. Men, if getting up in the morning gets you down because shaving is torture, chances are you have wiry whiskers or a tender skin. So try Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skins. Why, Mole gives you a shave as smooth as an apple. Yes, Mole is a heavier cream. The cream that not only softens your whiskers, but holds them up straighter and lets your razor cut them off close and clean. With Mole, you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly. Try it. See if you don't say, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skins. Mole. Now back to Jeffrey Barnes and Act Two of Follow That Cab. Mo and Julius, taxi drivers and would-be detectives, having apparently caught a murderer red-handed, let him go so they can solve the case by the clues. Having wiped away all the fingerprints to make the case more baffling, Mo is left alone with the corpse, all unaware that Julius is not coming back. And now the police have arrived on the scene and confront Mo. Well, buddy... What have you got to say for yourself? For myself? Nothing. Don't look at me. I didn't do it. Yeah, that's what they all say. Frisk him, Bill. See if he's got the murder weapon on him. <laughs> uh, he ain't got nothing on him. I'm being framed. What did you do with the gun, buddy? It ain't here. I've just been looking for it. It ain't here. Oh, oh, it ain't. Hey, Bill, careful how you touch those things. Might be fingerprints, you know. Uh, there ain't no fingerprints either. Oh, no? And why do you say that? Because I wiped... 
Uh, because you wiped them? Go on, go on, as you were saying. I wasn't saying nothing. Where's Julius? Where is he? You was going to say you wiped him off, right? I, uh... Where's Julius? He said he's coming right back. One false move out of you and I'll let you have it. You really think I've done it? Who else? You look mighty suspicious. I didn't do it. Brighton done it. Brighton, I tell you. Yeah, well, tell that to O'Brien. O'Brien. O'Brien? Yes, buddy. He's chief of the Homicide Bureau. And you're under arrest for murder. So they are taking me to see Inspector O'Brien. At first, I won't talk because I remember what Julia says about how we are going to solve the case our own selves and get famous. But finally, I am realizing that instead of getting famous, I am getting a hot seat if they can pin the murder on me. So they throw me in the cell, and the next morning, about 10 a.m. Julius! Hello, Mom. You know what day this is? Huh? This is visitor's day. Oh. You got just five minutes, mister. Mo, why did you do it? Do what, Julius? You don't have to pretend now, Mo. You can tell me I'm your friend. I, I don't get it, Julius. What? Mo, crime does not pay. Why did you do it? Do what? We know you've done it, Mo. Confess and things will go easier with you. Confess? Come, come. My patience is getting exhausting, my friend. You know you murdered Larkin. Murdered Larkin? Julius! Don't make me put you through the tight degree, my friend. Julius, are you crazy? You was with me when it happened. What are you trying to do with me? You know what happened. <laughs> all we right, all right, Mo. Settle down. Settle down. I was just and practicing. Then we said, uh, practicing? For what? You know the way Daniel Dearmore, once he gets a crook in a corner, how he starts to make with a toy degree and busts him down? Oh, that. You didn't have to do that to me, Julius. I didn't do it. You had me scared for a minute. Did I? Well, Julius, you got to get me out of here. Don't worry, my friend. That little matter has just been taken care of. I turn in the evidence to Chief O'Brien. Uh, you mean the bottle of whiskey with the fingerprints? Uh, the empty bottle with the fingerprints. Yeah, the empty bottle. Oh, Ed, I give O'Brien Boynton his address. Then you were in the clean. The cops will pick up Boynton, and I will be in a tabloid as the guy which cracked this case open. Ah, uh, here comes Chief O'Brien to let you out now. Hi, O.B. You say a man named Burton gave you this address, 790 78th Street? Uh, yeah, officer, that's right. That's where he lives. Did you make the pinch, Chief? You got him, huh? We uh, checked that number. It's the middle of the East River. What? Maybe he moved. Oh, Mo, the rat is giving you the double cross. Julius, ain't they gonna let me out of here? Just a minute, Mo. I'll do my best for you. Look, Chief, this man is not guilty. What about the fingerprints on the empty bottle I turned into you? Oh, yes, that's another thing. Uh, we've checked that, too. It's Boynton's. No. It ain't Moe's. No. It belongs to the man who's going to burn for Larkin's murder. Whose prints is it? Yours. Mine? What do you know? I took my own prints. <laughs> Come in, you two. Sit down. Uh, yes, yes. I suppose you are bringing me in here to your office because the entire police force is baffled, huh, Chief? I knew you would have to come get to me. Get your big feet off of my desk. Sure, sure. Don't get excited. Say, uh, what's all this here stuff on the table, Chief? Oh, that's some odds and ends we picked up in the lock and the popping. Keep your hands off that stuff. All right, all right. Clues, huh? They might be. Stay away from it. You've done enough damage already. Yeah, enough damage already. You know, you two boys are lucky. Very lucky. Yeah, lucky. How do you mean, Chief? Burton has just given himself up. He saw in the evening papers that we were looking for him. So you're in the clear. Burton give himself up? Julius, we are free. Yeah, very interesting. Extremely. Um, by the way, O.B., is Burton confessing? No, but he will. Ha, <laughs> ha. I am sorry I cannot see eye to eye with you, B. No. No. Now, I have a theory about who is knocking off who. Oh, look, you. One more theory out of you, and I'll send you up for ten years. Now, get out of here and get out fast before I change my mind and hold you as accessories after the fact. Uh, we're going, we're going, ain't we, Julius? Yeah. Whew. 
It certainly is lucky for us that Boynton give himself up. Mo, Boynton didn't do it. Didn't do it? But we seen him. You said he done it your own self. It's a dame which done it. A redhead dame. She's the dame which got in my cab yesterday and makes me drive at a Grand Central Station. Why her, Julius? See this picture? Yeah. That's her. I took it off the table in O'Brien's office. It was found in Larkin's apartment. But Julius, you should I have... remember she was very suspicious, nervous. Yeah, but what about Biden? Mo, all good dicks are getting off on a red hair and now and then. Remember what happens to Daniel Dearmore in the case of the Black Knighty? Oh, but that wasn't a red herring he got off on. That was the... Shut up. Now, look. This redhead dame, which is in such a stew to get away, is the real killer. Yeah. Yeah, Julius. A redhead herring, huh? Mo, we know who done it. We got a picture. Now all we got to do is get her. Yeah, all we got to do. Hey, wait a minute, Julius. Remember what O'Brien said about being accessories. Accessories, smasheries. We got the real clue. Now let's go find her. <laughs> Julius, turn Make off the radio. Run, You'll run down the battery. Oh, Look, Julius, we've been waiting parked out in front of Larkin's building for eight days now, waiting for that dame to show up. What's the matter, getting discouraged? Oh, look, Julius, maybe she won't never come back She's here. She's got it. says so in the book. A criminal always returns to the scene of the crime. I know. Yeah, and that song which Boynton wrote, it's driving me nuts. All the radio programs are playing it. Turn it off. I like it. But okay. Look, let's quit this detecting business, Julius, and get back into the hat business. That dame won't never hey, show. Mo, look. That dame. The one we're looking for. The redhead herring? Yeah. Hey, she's going into the building. Come on, we're going after her. This is Larkin's apartment. There she is. What? Okay, lady, you are under arrest for the murder of Larkin. I don't know who you are, what you're talking about. Look out, Mo, she's what? reaching for a gun. Grab her. Yes, Lord, hear me. I got it, Julius. Nice work, my friend. Now, Mrs., what you got to say for yourself? Well, I, 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 uh, okay. Okay, you got me. Now, aren't you proud of yourself? Hey, Julius, <laughs> the dame's boiling. I can't help it. Crime does not pay. Yeah, you're right. I killed him. I killed him because he mistreated me. He beat me. Me and my four children. Four kids? A dirty rat. Well, I'm sorry. It was bad enough when we were poor, but when he started making money, he just threw us out. Out into the cold, cold night. We were starving. Starving? Oh, that dirty bum. Yeah, I had to sell my new mink coat to get food for my little children. A guy like that didn't deserve to live. That's what I kept telling myself, so I bumped him. I killed him in self-defense. Everything went black before my eyes. I didn't know what I was doing. Naturally. Hey, Mo. Yeah, Julius. Got any money on you? About a buck seventy-five. Give it to me. For her? Yeah. Here. I couldn't accept it. I insist. Gee, you are a generous character, Julius. Ma, don't mention it. Here, lady, take it. Oh, gee, thanks. Thanks a lot. You gonna let me go now? What else? Oh, you're so kind. You're so sweet. Oh, are you just saying that? Could I have my gun back now? You want it back? What for? Well, I, uh, so that I can pawn it and get a few bucks, uh, dollars, to buy food for my poor little children. Yeah, yeah, sure, the poor little dove. Give it to her, Mo. Here, here, lady. Open up in there, open up. The cops. Goodness. Come out of that room with your hands up. Look, I'll hide behind the door. You open it. Don't worry, little dove. I'll handle them. Oh, so it's you two again. Oh, Brian. I thought I told you the next time I caught you monkeying it. You hit O'Brien over the head. He's out cold. Oh, lady, you shouldn't have done that. Okay, okay, let's cut the comedy. What comedy? Come on, we're getting out of here. Your cab outside? Oh, yeah, but... Shut up! I'm giving the orders. Let's go. I've killed one man with this gun. I can kill two more. Oh, Julius. She ain't no little dove. <laughs> This is Jeffrey Barnes again. 
In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of Follow That Cab. If you've been having trouble trying to combat dandruff, bear in mind that most ordinary hair preparations merely remove loose dandruff. Now, plain water does that. So if you want to fight a common type of dandruff effectively, the thing to do is use double dandrine. Double dandrine is a scientific product that goes to work on your scalp and actually combats this dandruff by killing the germs that many outstanding authorities contend are a cause, and it kills them on contact. Now, the reason why double dandrine is so amazingly effective is that it contains an active antiseptic called Alzan. This is a special ingredient used by many hospitals because of its remarkable efficiency. And no other hair preparation contains Alzan. You get it only in double dandrine. So try double dandrine and see why most ordinary hair preparations can't compare with its dandruff-combating effectiveness. If you're not completely satisfied, return the empty bottle and get your money back. Buy double dandrine at your druggist's. Step on it. Step on it. The cops are gaining on it. I can't go no faster, lady. I got it down to the floorboard now. Just take it easy with my cab. You though. shut up. I'll tell him what to do. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Julius, they're shooting at us. Oh, Lord, don't let him hit the tires, please. <laughs> Two can play at that game. Lady, you could have rolled that window down. Don't bother me! Did she get him? No, but I'm afraid what's going to happen to us. Oh! No. Uh, what's the matter? You hit Julius? It's no, worse. They hit the meter. It's 75 cents already. Well, turn it off. Turn it off. I can't. It's jammed. No, oh, the meter again. That one should have stopped it. It didn't. It's going twice as fast. Three dollars and ninety-four twenty-five. Five forty. Oh! Listen, here. Listen, you turn left. But lady, turn left. But I turn left or I'll blow your hell. Okay. <laughs> What happened? What happened? No street? So we are capturing the culprit, like Julius says. You see, she is the dead guy's ex-missus, and she don't like him. The reason she is coming back to the apartment is that she knows there's some cash hid there. Well, Burton is let go by the cops, and he gets his songs back. And that is why the papers are calling it Murder in A flat. You see, A flat is an apartment. But the best thing about the whole deal is Julius and me is becoming real famous. No kidding. You get the magazine, absolutely authentic, true crime fiction. Our true to life stories are appearing in this week's issue. <laughs> Now, this is Jeffrey Barnes again, inviting you to be with us next week when we present Richard Connell's The Doctor and the Lunatic. Here is a story that is as tense and suspenseful as Follow That Cab was comic. A mysterious madman is on the loose, a man who is driven to destroy all things of beauty. Plenty of excitement, action, and chills, and a real bang-up climax. So don't miss Richard Connell's The Doctor and the Lunatic. <laughs> The original music for the Mole Mystery Theater is composed and conducted by Alexander Semler. Follow That Cab was written by Larry and Sidney Sloan. Johnny Gibson and Larry Haynes were featured in tonight's program. This is Dan Seymour saying goodnight until next Friday at this same time when the Mystery Theater presents The Doctor and the Lunatic. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.